Hey, 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 family, it's your girl Evelyn here. And today I thought I would do a video about my entire eyeshadow collection. So I'm not necessarily like a huge makeup vlogger person. I love makeup. My collection is smaller than the average influencer, but probably substantially larger <laughs> than the average woman. And so I wanna do this video because I wanna start doing a series on my channel about playing with old palettes. Because right now, as it stands, we used to get inundated with eyeshadow palettes. Like I felt like there was eyeshadow palettes coming out out of our ears every other week. And I feel like with the rise of the clean girl makeup aesthetic and all of that, we haven't seen a lot of eyeshadow palettes coming out right yet some of us still really enjoy eyeshadow some of us being me and so I thought you know what what better opportunity than to dive into uh my current palettes so I thought what better time to do a here's all my eyeshadow palettes and start a series about playing with old palettes as we go through um I'm gonna do these by brand some of these palettes are no longer available but I still have them and I would love to know which of these palettes you have which ones you enjoy which ones you're like oh I need to pull those back out I will say this also is going to kind of represent my favorite eyeshadow brands because I don't have a ton of palettes from brands that I don't like right um so I think there's there, I think there's four or five main brands but then I have some like one-offs here and there and also that way you can kind of tell me like which palettes do you want me to start with the playing with eyeshadow palette playing with old palette series we can play with them together and then maybe like once a week or a couple of times a month you know i'm coming on i'm doing a get ready with me using an old palette and hopefully it will encourage you to use your old palettes and i see i've seen people do videos like this where it's like you know digging in the back or whatever i really enjoy it it's just that they don't keep the series going so i would love to keep this series going until i finish at least one eye look from every single palette and in the spirit of eyeshadow day i'm wearing i'm wearing color which i don't i mean there's there's a lot of color here <laughs> there's a lot of neutrals but there's a lot of color and we'll talk about which palette this is so Let's get started and let's talk about a brand that I feel like doesn't get talked about enough uh, anymore, but I still really enjoy them. And I think I have six palettes from them, okay? And it is none other than Viseyar. Let me tell you something. When I, when I got back into my makeup game, Viseyar was you know, the cat's meow, it, it was it was all the rage for like the true makeup girlies. And I think the reason why Viseart's palettes don't get as much hype as maybe some under, other brands is because they're not doing anything outlandish. They're not dropping a palette every 21 days, but the quality is great. I think the packaging is very, very simple. And so I wanna start with my smaller palettes. So um, this first one I have is the Petite Pro 2. And I will, I will be honest, I don't use these as much as I should. And, um, but they, I, these were always meant to be my travel palettes. Look at how pretty this is, right? Like this is a gorgeous, gorgeous palette. And if these palettes are still available, I'm gonna link them all by brand in the description box below. But if you have this, let me know. Do you love it? This is a very specific color story. So this is the Petite Pro 2. And because I have a lot of palettes to get through, I'm like, Evelyn, okay, let, let's move it along. I probably should have taken these out of their uh, cases. So then I have two of the next size up, okay? One is, this is Spritz Edit. And I will say this, Are let me ask you this. Are you the kind of person where your entire eye look has to come out of a out of one palette or are you okay with hopping around okay so this is spritz at this is the spritz edit palette and i will say some of these like let's say this palette in particular i probably would dip out for a darker eyeshadow right um but it's still again a very very pretty palette this is giving very spring vibes to me even though it's august and we are <laughs> Well, let me say this. In Texas, we're no, we're no, we're close to fall. Fall don't start till December. Okay, <laughs> fall don't start till 
fall does not start until December. And then probably one of my favorite Viseart palettes is the Dark Edit palette. And again, I think just having, you know, deeply melanated skin, I love rich colors. And even though I like, I mean, not today, you can't really tell. I like a softer eye look. <laughs> look at this. Now this, one, you can tell that I've used this a lot. And this, I, I don't need to dip out for anything. I mean, I've got brown, I've got navy, I've got like, this is hidden. This is, this is, this is, if you are somebody and you're like, I don't wear color all the time, but you just need a little random sampling of color in your collection for the few times that you want to wear color, dark edit is it. Okay, now I'm going to move into probably my most used Viseart palette. And it's kind of on autopilot for me that when I travel, I this this is the eyeshadow palette that I'm bringing. If I don't bring anything else, like I'm bringing this, I may bring something else, but more than likely, I'm just bringing this. And this is the mink set palette you talking about just simple neutral can give you day can give you night can give you smoky can give you soft will go with any outfit every time i travel this is the palette it's just simple this this is me in a palette okay I've got dark brown, I've got mid-tones, I've got a couple of different, I've got copper shimmers, I've got gold shimmers, I've got like pink champagne shimmers, I've got two different mid-tones, I've got a purple satiny shimmer. It's going to give me whatever I need when I travel and I don't have to really think about anything else. And that's why I say like, I mean, it's just, it's just stunning. Um, and it's even, I mean, if you really get close up on it, it's even more stunning. Let me, let me old school YouTuber vibes. Can you really get into that? I mean, you can see this palette is well loved. Okay. But I, this, this, this does it for me every single time. Okay. This palette does it for me every single time. So these next two palettes, I'm not sure if Viseart still makes these or if they're still in production. I think you possibly can get these on Beautylish again. I will check and see maybe on the Viseart website. Sometimes they bring things back. I love these two palettes and I actually like this format of palette. So this is Libertine and Trist. Okay. And um, let me show you. This is their metal packaging. Okay. So this I've, I've had these for a while, but I love these. Look at this palette. I can do a whole eye look out of here as well, right? I love this. Very pretty, very simple. But when you get close up on it, there's some dimension to these colors. I love this. This is the Trist. Oops, okay. The sleeve. Um, this is the Trist eyeshadow palette. And um, the next one is the Libertine. Like I said, I think these might be discontinued. But if you have these... Let me know in the comments below, okay? And this is Libertine. I, I love this palette. It's giving me like I'm not dark edit, but we could be we could be cousins. And I don't know which one I like better. If I like this one better, if I like dark edit better. They're very similar. I have done so many looks with this palette over the, over the time that I've had it. I absolutely love it love it love it okay so that's viseart right oh this video is already long and we have several more brands to go so now let's jump into another brand that probably has really you know kind of come into my world just in the past maybe two years and this is my brand for color like when i want to play these are the palettes that i'm pulling out I'm sorry I have them all here so I have all my palettes in a desk and so there are is that it is it just four palettes just four palettes from this brand one of them is very neutral and then the other three are extremely colorful but this is like I want something different I you know this is when I want to play this is when I want to experiment this is I want a multi chrome or whatever and that brand is the Nessa Myricks, okay? <laughs> so let me just start with the groundwork, um, Defining Neutrals palette. I have to be honest, I shouldn't have got this palette. I was debating between this palette 
and the Patrick Ta palette. And I will tell you that I don't use this enough. It looks very used. I mainly have used it for eyeliner, right? Kind of in the oops, in the brown and black section. I've done a, a couple of eye looks with it. I don't love it. And I think it's because... The quality is amazing. So it's nothing to do with the quality. I think it's too makeup artisty for me, right? Like I think I'm I'm a much simpler girl like with the, the with the pomades and the cream. I like I I like a powdered eyeshadow, right? I keep it simple for me. I like I like it very very simple, okay? Now, these other 3, which I think all 3 are limited edition, okay? And I, I think one of them is still available, but I'm going to go through them in the order that I got them. This is the Lightworks Volume 3, the Experience Palette. So I remember this when Lightworks Volume 3, the bigger palette came out. I was like, yes, I want that because I knew I wanted some multi-chromes in my collection, but I knew I wanted them from a high-end brand. I have nothing against independent brands or anything like that. I just didn't know them well enough. I kind of wanted them all in a palette. You know, I wanted Lux packaging, all that kind of stuff, whatever. So I was super excited and I missed out on the full-size Lightwork Volume 3. So when the experienced version came out, when the when the when the the mini came out, I was all over it, right? So this is the palette, okay? Multi-chrome. And actually, the shadow that I have on my eyes today is, is Gaia, right? I have that on my eyes. And what I did, because her her multi-chromes are very, very vibrant, is I put it, I put the dark brown from a from a single shadow on first. I put the smallest amount. I know it looks like a lot, I put the smallest amount of Gaia on here, and then I went back over it with the brown eyeshadow. I saw a makeup artist talking about that on Instagram. Like if you want to tone down the color of an eyeshadow particularly on brown skin is to go back over it with um some brown eyeshadow so that's lightwork volume three the experience and so when lightwork volume four came out i was like i'm not gonna miss the chance to to get it right now i will have to be honest i will say so this is lightwork volume four i will have to say that this is probably out of the three light works that I have, probably my least favorite, and and it's for the most, it's for the oddest reason. First of all, look at these colors. I mean, and it's because the colors are so doggone vibrant. I mean, you just barely tap in here, and it's like whoa. Okay, I mean, it is over the top, and then these ones in the middle are like water activated. So I pro I typically use the ones on the top and on the bottom. But even then, the colors are so intense that it's hard. I like I like color, not all the time. I'm typically in neutral makeup. But when I do, I like a, a, a softer wash of color. I know my eyeshadow today is saying otherwise, right? But I like a soft wash of color. These are not soft. These are in your face. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. I can see your color on your eyelids coming from down the street. Okay, that's what this is, right? Now, I would say, so this is probably my second favorite. Or, or no, yeah, second favorite. Volume four, probably my least favorite. This, this is our most recent one, which I think is still available. This is volume five. And when I tell you this is the one for me, I don't, and after this, I don't think I need any more multi-chromes, right, from any brand. First of all, the packaging is stunning. I still have the plastic on here, but the packaging is stunning, right? And I want you to see this palette. It's all the multi-chrome I could need. And here's the thing. They're softer, okay? I mean, you're still going to get some color, but there's like varying degrees of, of intensity. There's varying shades of green like this is green this is green and this is green but and they're all multi-chrome but it varies right like this is blue this is blue and this is blue but it's all very different and I can just tap a little bit on the eye and be on my way okay y'all there is something flying in here and so it's making me a little it's making me a little nervous 
you know what? Let me tell you something. I live next to a, um, a, a, like, I don't want to say a nature preserve, but like a walking trail that's like filled with grass, or whatever. And they, and they all live next to nature. They said it'd be fun. They said until it's the summertime and then there's always a bug anyway. Okay. So now let's switch into, okay, this brand, I only have two of their palettes. I, I like these. Patrick Tall, like the formula, like the palette. I'm gonna have to kill whatever that is on the wall because it's, it's making me itch. That's why I keep doing this because I'm just like, ah. Okay, so let's start with Major Dimension 1. I do not have Major Dimension 3, the all matte palette. I thought about it, right? And that's when I say I should have got that one over the Danessa Myricks, but I also can't tell you the last time I wore an all matte eye on purpose, okay? So this is... Major Dimension 1. This is me in an eyeshadow palette. Okay, it's neutral. And it like the undertones are actually neutral on me, right? If I just want to throw something on, this, this is the palette that I'm going for. Love the dark shimmery brown right here. I love, love, love that color. Simple, easy, good formula. No complaints. Nice packaging. No complaints. Nothing to write home about, but also no complaints, right? And then Major Dimension 2, when it came out, I was like, I love it. And I'm, I'm not going to lie. I do like a monochromatic look and a monochromatic palette from time to time. So this is Major Dimensions 2. Love this. Rosy, burgundy. Can give me a soft look, Okay but a little bit of color but not like girl you got on burgundy eyeshadow i mean it can go there but it works okay again got the creams in here simple nothing to write home about but nothing to complain about like nice packaging great formula just reliable now let's get into a brand where i think i have more eyeshadow palettes from this brand than any other that it may be running neck and neck with another brand but we'll have to see but at first glance one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven <laughs> i have 11 palettes from this brand and that brand is none other than natasha denona would i be a makeup girly and i didn't have a ton of natasha denona palettes Let's start with the small palettes, which I'm probably going to end up decluttering some of these. Let me know if you want to see me do a declutter because I need to declutter um, some eyeshadow palettes, some blushes, some makeup. Some, there's some stuff that needs to be decluttered. But let me say this. I realize I am not a small palette girl. OK, I, I like a midi size. I don't like a super huge palette with like 45 different shades in it. But I also need more than five shades. I need, I need variety. So let's start with these two. These two palettes were actually, these are the five pan. These two palettes were actually never released publicly, I believe. I believe these came in a, one of those like makeup subscription boxes. And I bought it just to get these. And I don't use them. So this one is Peak, is what it's called. Five sh pan shadow. And this one is Ayana. This is so cool toned. I don't use this. This doesn't have anything deep enough for me. It just gives me three transition shades. I don't use them. Okay. Then I have, I guess I could have actually showed you the shadows. Right. I don't know what I was thinking when I bought that. This one does have a deep enough shadow. I'm never, I'm never going to go that cool tone. I mean, rarely. Right. And even if I do yeah anyway so these three right okay so i have the mini love palette which i think was my first natasha denona palette i have the mini bronze palette and i have the mini biba palette now mini love it looks brand new because it is, when i actually put it on my eyes it is so cool toned and i don't love it I have a neutral undertone to my skin and I can um, 
wear warm or cool or neutral, it, it don't do it for me. So when I when I get at like some of these, you're going to tell that I'm probably going to declutter. And I just I realize I'm just not a small. And here's the thing. I'm not small pan girly and the quality is amazing. OK, this one, mini bronze is probably my favorite. Sometimes I will bring this with me if I want to warm up the look with that Viseart palette that I told you about. That's a travel palette. Um, doing a look with this by itself is a little too orange, but I still like it. It's still enjoyable. I'm definitely going to keep this one. I think it's a great compliment to the midi size bronze, which we're going to get into. And then I have mini Biba. Now, I own the large Biba. I'm going to show you that in a second. And so when this came out, I was all about it. I was like, ooh, yes, give it to me. And I'm not in love. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not going to get rid of this one. I think I'm going to keep it. But there's nothing to write home about. Amazing quality. It's nothing to write home about. I will say probably my biggest gripe with Natasha Denona as a brand when it comes to eyeshadows is that very few of her palettes have enough really deep shadows for me to smoke out the corner or make a deeper darker look so that's Biba okay so those are the, the mini ones and so now let me get into her midi palettes and I have the love palette I have sunrise I have bronze and I have my dream I don't have like glam I don't have yucca I don't have um what's the burgundy one I don't have any of those so let's start with the love palette these are very very specific color stories okay apparently when this came out a lot of people didn't like it I like it when I'm in the mood for this color story, though, right? Very, very specific. And that's what I mean. Like, when I was curating my eyeshadow collection, I intentionally was like, I want a palette that covers these colors. I want a palette that covers these colors. You're going to kind of see that theme throughout my makeup collection. Like, I knew I wanted multi-chrome. So I was like, Danessa Myricks, right? I knew that I wanted, like, a pink, purpley palette, a blue palette, a green palette. Like, you're going to see that. So I really enjoy this for when I want this color scheme. I haven't had any problems with it. I love it, I enjoy it. And the same thing with the Sunrise palette, okay? And again, let me know, do you have the Natasha Denona palettes? Do you enjoy them? Sunrise palette, and so here's the thing, I enjoy this, but there's not a color here that's deep enough for me to smoke out a, a, um, a corner or a crease for me. So this is like a whole bunch of mid-tones for me, right? So for that reason, I don't use it as often, but the formula is beautiful. I enjoy it. Now, my probably my favorite two midi palettes, My Dream and the Bronze Palette. When the Bronze Palette came out, I lost it. I was like, yes, please, and thank you. I love it. Again, I could have used a deep dark brown in here to really, I mean, obviously there's there's this shade, but it takes it in a very specific direction. I could have used something else, right? I love it. It's been well loved by me. It will continue to be well loved by me. I love the bronze palette. I think my favorite midi palette and maybe possibly my favorite Natasha Denona palette is the My Dream. One, it's so dark, right? Which on me looks kind of natural and everyday. Y'all, it's, it's neutral, which works great on my skin tone. It's got a dark black and a dark brown. I've got, I've got mid-tones over here. I've got topper shades. I've got a little bit of color. Like, this is a palette that, similar to that Viseart palette, if I'm traveling and I'm like, I, I need variety to do a lot of things, this this is the one now this is much bigger than the mink set from viseart it's hidden now okay i have some specialty palettes from natasha denona i have metropolis which i think was my first natasha denona palette if i am correct if i want green <laughs> 
this is it. The challenge with this palette is all these doggone shades and there's not a brown that's dark enough. This brown right here is my is the color of my skin. So for me to use this palette with all of these shades, I have to dip out, which in general doesn't bother me, but sis, you could have gave me a dark brown because even the even the blues in here, because they're her cream to powder formula, are not super dark. Okay. It's an amazing palette. If she ever did Metropolis in a midi, please, I'd be all over it. I would be all over it, okay? Then, 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 was Metropolis my first? Biba. For a long time, Biba was my favorite. And I, the eye look that I get out of Biba. I just, I can't get over it. It, oh. now it has the black in here, but the brown, I mean, I really got to work with it to get it to be dark. Oh. The mid-tones, like this middle row, hits. I've done a gray look, which I really do gray looks. I've done a gray look with this palette. Stunning. This shade Rustic right here, one of my favorite lid shades of all time. When I put it on, it never does me wrong. It always looks good. And then I will say one of the darkest palettes from Natasha Denona, which I appreciate, is when she did the Glam Face Palettes. I'm considering this eyeshadow because there's no way I'm using the blush and highlight this in here. So I don't like cream blush. The highlighter is way too light. The packaging is absolutely stunning, okay? And, but these shadows, oh, honey. I mean, and they are darker than they appear. I was like, sis, so you are capable of giving me rich, I can use every shadow in here. I mean, you can tell I have really gone in. What is this? I have really gone into this shade. It's such a pretty shimmery dark brown. It's only five shades. This this should be a five pan. This should be a five pan. I, I absolutely love it. So that is my Natasha Denona collection. So these next two brands, I only have two palettes from each one of them. Probably not my favorite. Probably the palettes that I never reach for. Okay. Um, well, one of them has a fairly new palette that I do um, enjoy. And I think with both of these... The palettes might still be available, but the like these were popular like years ago, but I they were palettes that came out when I wasn't actively pursuing my enjoyment of makeup as much and I wanted them so bad. So let's start with Too Faced, which is a brand that I'm just like their stuff is good. I just for whatever reason I just don't think I'm their targeted demographic. So I remember I picked up this Ginger Red Spice Holiday Palette a couple of years ago. It's really cute. I've always loved their metal tins. This is a very specific color story. I mean, if you want a pink eye, not, <laughs> not, the <laughs> not a pink eye, but a pink eyeshadow look, this is it. I can't use four of the colors in here. So it's, it's almost like cover up these four. And give me that quad. Do you know what I mean? And so, because of that, it's like, and when am I walking around with a neon pink eye as I sit here with a bright green eye? I know. And then the other palette is just Peachy Mattes. So I remember I was watching YouTube when this came out. I was big in, you know, I was watching all the beauty vloggers and all that kind of stuff or whatever. And so when I got back into makeup, I I I, I reached for this. Again, if you cover up this side. That's a great six pan for me. <laughs> um, I also just don't find myself wearing a ton of all matte eyeshadow looks these days. I just like a little dimension. Beautiful, but that's why I'm like, we need to do a series on playing with old palettes because these never get used. Okay, so that's Too Faced. Those are the only two palettes I have from Too Faced. And now, let's get into 
tart. I used to have a, another tart palette back in the day. I decluttered it. Um, so let's, this is the tart toasted palette. I, at that time, this was before I had my Viseart. This is before I had my Natasha Denona. This is before I had, we're going to get to Pat McGrath. And I wanted a neutral brown palette. This is actually a pretty good palette. Again, you know, cover this up. And that makes a great six pan for me. Um, it's a good palette. I've used this probably I, at least in the last two months, right? So, you know, a simple look, nothing too crazy. I just think that the Viseart is better. It, you know, I do. I like this packaging though, right? Um, it still has a little bit of an aroma. Uh, you know, Tarte sometimes, kind of similar to Too Faced, likes to add fragrance to the eyeshadow. Now, this one just came out over the holidays. This is the Honeysuckle Palette. And this came with a lip liner and a Maracuja Juicy Lip, juicy lip, lip Pencil Gloss situation. This is eyeshadow and blush. I actually really really like this i remember watching a youtuber go on and on and on about this palette and i was like eyeshadow that's deep enough for me and a blush in in a nice little palette and it's not four or five shades it is nine shades but i was like it's it's a vibe i don't know if this is still available i will look and see this is also great for travel right you could just pop this and it has the blush okay the blush actually looks really good on me too. So it like I, I typically, I won't say typically, but a lot of times if a palette has blush in it, I'm just like, mm, there's no point in me even getting it because why? Now, let's let's move on to so this particular brand. I actually believe I have 3 palettes from them, but I only have 2 in my drawer. Let me pull the third one out. Hold please. So this brand, I have three palettes from them. One that I absolutely never use. Uh, but when I bought it, I bought it on, when I bought the one that I never used, I bought it on sale a long, long time ago. And kind of, I don't want to say I feel obligated, but at that time, I, I just felt compelled to buy it, right? And so this brand is ABH, okay? The palette that I bought on sale and felt obligated, to, not obligated, but compelled to buy at the time was the Jackie Ina palette with ABH. And here's the thing. If you want to talk about deep colors, Jackie served, right? For There's some odd reason that I don't reach for this palette at all. At one time I was using it, but here's the thing. I realized with ABH, particularly when they were in this format or or back when this came out, the powders are so freaking soft that I couldn't stand it. it the level of fallout for me, and I'm not a big fan of fallout because I, I, I do my foundation first, my base first. So if you have a ton of fallout, for me, it's like I've got to either over powder or whatever. It's a mess. I don't enjoy it. These two palettes, this one I bought recently, like in the past year. This I think I bought in the past two years. This is the Primrose palette, I believe. Yes. The thing about this palette, it's actually pretty stunning. I just rarely use it. Okay. This is, again, why we need to do a plan with a palette. This is such a pretty color story. This actually is a great blush on me, this one right here. This is actually a really pretty color story. That purple, really great deep color. And I can splash any of the colors on top. And it's a look. I don't know why I don't use it. And so again, you know, maybe shout out to the brands for not dropping 50,000 palettes uh, over the past year or two. And it's forcing me to kind of dig in the crates, if they say. And then this most recent one that I bought, this is the Fall Romance palette. I had done a video with this and i don't know if i ever posted it because i underestimated the pigmentation of this bad boy right here she is deep she is dark she is pigmented and it don't take a lot and i i i i, I really actually enjoy these colors i feel like it's not overly soft 
Okay, I'm trying to cover up the mirror here. I really like it. Okay, and it, it has made me want to try other of their palettes. But as you can see, I have one face. <laughs> and I have so many eyeshadow palettes that I was like, let's just play with old palettes. So that's ABH. Now, I think the last brand that I have of eyeshadow palettes is Pat McGrath, which I'm never, I, you're never going to get me to get rid of my Pat McGrath palette ever. And I love Pat McGrath eyeshadow palettes, Mothership specifically. I have some Motherships here. I have some holiday palettes. I have some quads. I think this is the brand that is rivaling I even have a single from Pat McGrath. I think this is the brand that is rivaling Natasha Denona in my collection. And it's kind of like if I know that I want a flawless, flawless eyeshadow execution, it's going to be Pat McGrath. I know that her colors are going to be deep enough for me. I know that um, the quality is there. I know it's going to be smooth and buttery. I know it's going to blend. And I will say one of these palettes is the palette that kind of like re-sparked my or sparked my love for luxury beauty and really just sent me into outer space. Like I remember like being on the website and, you know, like trying to get the palette as soon as it came out. I will say I'm not as enthusiastic about the brand's launches as it used to be. And, I, and I, I feel like that's kind of sad. Pat makes my favorite concealer of all time. Um, I have her gloss on mixed with um, like two or three other things, right? But I have, what is this called? This is Twilo, I have, but it's mixed with like this Hermes. And then it's also mixed with this <laughs> Violet FR Beast of Bomb. There's a lot. And a lip liner. I know a lot going on just to get a very simple look. However, let's get into Pat McGrath. And then I should I include my singles? I don't have a ton of singles. But I might. I might. Okay. But this is about, supposed to be about my palettes. So let's start with let's start with the smaller palettes, right? So I think this is the newest palette to my collection from Pat McGrath. This is the Sublime Smoke. It's mini, but it's mighty. Let me tell you something. This too could also just come travel with me. And I know I said that I don't like small palettes. She hits though. Ooh, I, it, it, it's just going to hit every single time, right? I can use five out of the six of these shades. I don't use this, this light one down here. It's mini, but it's mighty. The quality is sublime is she tiny yes is it stunning also yes i think there's a purple one like this too i believe i don't know if she still sells it but hits okay i have three quads and i like back when the backs were gold now they're not and that's the thing like i think pat started as luxury and I don't know what happened. Anyway, let's get into it. So this first one, I don't even know the name of this because it's not on the packaging. Y'all remember this? This this brown is a fantastic one to done shade. Very cool tone though. But if, if you want a little, just a quick razzle dazzle, Pat McGrath is always going to have you. Does it say which one this is? It does not. Y'all know the one. I'll have it in the description box. Let's go. Look at this. This is probably one of the most shiny, most stunning dual chromes I have ever encountered in my entire natural life. And a little bit goes a long way. I will say this. My only gripe with Pat McGrath shadows, particularly special shades, is I, I, I typically don't use eye primer. I probably should. I don't. If I do not use an eye primer with Pat McGrath, particularly with her sparkly shades, I'm going to have glitter. I'm going to have it in my eye and it's going to hurt all day. And so sometimes that has deterred me because I know it's going to get in there. I can't see it, but I can feel it. My eyes are watering all day or whatever. I mean, the look be hitting, 
but and then I also have this one I love this brown shade I love it so much again these are all special baked just a tapity tap 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 so let's get into her holiday palettes I have three of her holiday palettes I believe this one was the first one I will say I'm guilty of not using this this is a very specific color story I'm not in love with the cardboard packaging okay but it's stunning when I do use it though I'm like oh I need to use this more because the color story I'm trying not to there we go it, it's stunning right and I wasn't even knowledgeable about Pat McGrath when the original Star Wars packages or uh, palettes came out. So I was happy that these uh, were relaunched in a holiday palette, right? This one is called, and I know these for a fact were limited edition. This one was called Mother Shemega Celestial Divinity. When I say you pat, got some names on her palettes. Okay. And then the next one is, this is Mother Shemega Celestial Odyssey. Okay. This might be oh, this might be my favorite of her holiday palettes because I can get some very everyday looks out of here, but then I can also do a couple of splashes of color. I don't have to dip out of this palette for anything. I love it. Okay. I love 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 that. That's why I say we need to do a plan with old palettes. And now this last one I'm happy that I got it. I got it on sale at like Home Goods, and I was kind of disappointed. Like, Pam McGrath's in Home Goods? What is happening? I got it for $28. And this is the. What's the name of it? Ma Celestial Nirvana. Okay. And this is when everybody was begging Pat for color, right? And so she was like, I'm going to give you color. I'm just not going to give it to you in a mother shit. <laughs> okay. If I want to play, this has all the colors I need, right? I mean, this and Danessa Myricks, I have all the colors that I need. I will say, though, I'm a neutral girly. But I feel like the thing is, for me, and let me know if you're like this, I... When I do want color, I want it from quality brands. Well, let me let me rephrase that because I don't want to. I, I do not want to imply that drugstore palettes are not quality. I just prefer luxury eyeshadow palettes. That's it, right? And so I'm probably not gonna buy any more of Pat's like holiday cardboard palettes because they don't feel luxury to me. What I love the most from the brand. Are the motherships and I have six of these let's start with the one that started it all when divine rose 3 first came out so I had not been around for any of the previous motherships right but I was around for the launch of divine rose 3 so much so that I have it in the special packaging okay when this palette came out I lost my entire mind I was on the site the day of launch, I remember I was texting two of my friends, like, girl, are you on the site? Get your, get, get, get ready. I still love this palette. I still love this palette. I still wear this palette, okay? I could do a whole month and just do Pat McGrath and be snatched every single day. Then, Bronze Seduction. We know about it. Love this palette. I love this brown by the way, Pat's browns on me, stunning. Okay. Love, love, love this palette. This, this shade right here, a little hard pan for me. Also not my favorite shade, but I've done some stunning looks with it. Okay. This is the fact that I know most of these by name, not all of them. Oh, I can't remember this one. This is my favorite eyeshadow color of all time. This brown right here. It's my favorite eyeshadow color of all time. Not just in Pat McGrath, of all time. Because very rarely do I get a deep, shimmery brown where the shimmer is also brown. It's not silver. 
It's not gold. It's not some weird color. As you can see, it's been well loved. This, this brown is probably one of the most spot on neutral, not plum, not red, not burgundy, not gray. One of the best browns ever. I will do those two in a look and call it a day. Okay. We've got three more. <laughs> three more motherships. Okay. <sighs> Utopian Dream. The fact that I know these, most of these, without the name on it says something. I love it. Now, yes, was this the time where Pat was just giving us pink, 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 pink? Yes. Was I over it? Am I over it? Yes. I still love, I still love Utopian Dream. Okay. Oh, I forgot the name of this one. Is this subliminal or sublime? I can't remember. It doesn't say. This is probably my least used mothership, but it's great. The black and the brown being in here. This is actually a stunning shade on the cheeks. Because these are face palettes, technically. Okay. This green holiday every time it, 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 it tap tap every time but it's a very specific shade of green okay and then i believe this last one is moonlit seduction yes i actually really like this palette. it's very cool tone though right there are still like one or two motherships that i want to get despite pat not being you know whatever i i i, I want okay so that is that are that's all my Pat McGrath. So I have two single eyeshadows from Pat McGrath. This came in a kit. I'm I'm never going to use this like wet jelly iridescent color. I got this kit because I wanted the blue eyeshadow that came with it, which is Blitz Sapphire. It is the blue of blues. If you want blue, is this. It's stunning. I've actually, obviously it's been used, but I've actually dug my finger in it accidentally. Stunning. But I have two Tom Ford quads and a Tom Ford single. All three of which I, I rarely use. Okay, so the first quad that I have from Tom Ford is in Last Dance. great quality this blue is actually quite stunning what what am i doing here nothing it's probably going to get decluttered okay beautiful quality it don't do it for me okay and then i got this other quad and this is in suspicion i think this is one of his more popular quads it looks so frosty on me even even this shade looks unbelievably frosty on me. And then I also have a single from Tom Ford. And this is a, a pot eyeshadow, which, again, I'm not super in love with. This is a dual chrome. It doesn't look like much in a pan, but I do use this on occasion. I'll just tap it on the It's like a pinky gold mix. Very, very pretty. I probably will keep this, even though I believe I have a shadow in one of my palettes that mimics this, this is probably the one that I keep. So y'all, oh my goodness. That is my entire eyeshadow collection. Um, I think I have a couple of drugstore eyeshadows that I don't use, so there's no point in me including them in this. But that is the entire collection. I know this was a very long video, but let me know which one of these that we timestamps by brand. I'll link all the ones that I can below. Let me know which one of these palettes do you have? Which branch did I start with? Which palette do you want me to start with? And we're going to work our way through <laughs> all these palettes in a um, playing with old palette series. So you let me know and I will see you in my next video. Peace.